All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to wedge a cylinder much like this, but it's gonna be on a diagonal. And I'm gonna wedge it to the side um, of, of the bottom of this cuboid here. Um, in terms of design, I'm not too concerned with design at the moment. I'll start thinking about design later, but this is more instructional videos on how to wedge specific forms onto other forms. And also a note here, um, my two-year-old is playing around behind me and hopefully won't be too distracted, but will be part of this video. Uh, just to kind of reiterate, this is the some of the goals that we're trying to achieve here. Uh, we're gonna be using a variety of pencils, red, orange, and blue, colored pencils, erasable colored pencils, and eventually on top of that, a nice uh, coating of graphite value. But for now, this video is about one thing. And I'm gonna rough it in first. I'm gonna rough it in with my orange pencil. I just kind of get this location, the sense, the idea of what I wanna do. But basically is why I brought this over in the first place. This is a cylinder on its side on a diagonal. In order to draw a cylinder, unlike the cylinder I drew here, this cylinder has to be derived from a cuboid, a rectangular cuboid. Um, so, Basically, the cylinder is probably going to be about this big, and it's going to go back in space about this, and then maybe end about right here, something like that. I don't want it to end in the same, to, thinking about design, I don't want it to be in the same exact line as that, so maybe I'll stop it a little short, like right here. So it goes in and back out, or whatever. Or I'll make it really long, where it comes out about right there. Actually, I kind of like it out further. So I think I'll go with that. And basically this, it it will curve right here and then probably hook on about right there. So maybe I wanna, maybe I wanna raise it up just a little bit. So maybe I wanna raise it up to there. It's always really good to rough it in because it's gonna give you a sense of where things should be. So I have my kind of rough ellipse of what I want this to look like and its location in the front here. I'm gonna use that as my starting point to put everything else in. So what I'm gonna do now is just, I'm just going to rough this in, in terms of a um, rectangle going in this direction. Now I can put it in with my ruler because I know where the left side of it, want, I want it to be the right the top and the bottom. While I'm doing this, I want this rectangle, rectangle, this, um, cuboid to be somewhat square-like on the front. It can be as long as it wants, but in terms of the front of it, you want it to be somewhat square-like. This really isn't a perfect uh, cylinder. It's more of a spherical form or an oval shape, which is fine. Um, this one might be more spherical because I'm, I'm probably gonna have a better chance at creating a square.
creating a square on the front. Um, so it's not the end of the world if you are unable to achieve a perfect square-like form. So once I put this in, oh, this is challenging, huh? <laughs> so I have my two verticals in and I had a I had one of my transparent rulers around but I think my two-year-old grubby hands found it so I'm going to use this roller here as a slider What I did there is I just made the line and now I'm extending the line. So this circle is going to live in this space here. And what I'm going to do is after that, I'm going to take this corner here and I'm going to extend this in that direction. Now, the reason why uh, there's a bend in this table, so I'm going to have to draw this right side. The reason why I am uh, going with a diagonal approach to drawing this or because it's a diagonal sphere but the reason why i'm i'm going with the approach of drawing this with a um a cuboid as opposed to a the same approach as i did here more of the flat kind of um approach uh is because it's going on a diagonal in space you can get away with it there here if it's vertical you have to go that approach otherwise it just looks kind of ri ridiculous all right, I think I'm going to extend this line just a little bit more before I move my left hand. All right. Now, I said I wanted to end about right here because this is going to be the exterior part of the sphere. And the eye will loop around this circle, come back around. So, I am thinking about design a little bit. So that's going to be the very edge. I'm I I'm dangerously close to the edge of the paper, um, but I think there's still enough space where it's not going to be creating too much visual tension there. That's my main concern. If it touches the edge of the paper, it could cause a little tension by um, drawing the eye over to that one area. All right. So I have my rectangle um, that's going to be a big sphere overlapping this sphere. And what I'm going to do is um, draw it as if it's transparent. So this back line here, I'm, I'm going to draw a line straight down. Again, I'm using my paper as a guide to make sure this is a perfectly straight line. This takes me a second. To get this worked out. Here we go. Seems to be a nice vertical. And with my slider. Slide my corner over to this corner. And then I'm going to slide this corner up to the back corner. <laughs> this, this is gonna be a funny video and they should all meet in the same spot which they do and it works out for me second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross my corners here find my center um, to do that just so I don't confuse you or I don't confuse myself I'm gonna add another um, color here I'm gonna add a, a light blue because I'm starting to overlap my lines quite a bit with the orange because there's an orange box behind here. There's an orange box in front. And I'm, I'm just going to try to introduce another color just so it doesn't drive me crazy. And you as a viewer. So this is the center point where they commit or connect. After I find my center, I draw a line perfectly straight up and down. I don't know. 
how good this video is going to be. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on the back. Crosses my corner. Finds my center. My vertical line. And what I did put on both of them is the horizontal line, but again, the horizontal line is on a diagonal, which is parallel to the tops and the bottoms. So I have to do the slide. I have to slide that up from the bottom, which I do now. And I'm gonna slide it over there and do the same thing. All right, so you can see why I use the color blue because I'm starting to get a lot of overlap and it's getting confusing. So when in doubt, if you need a fourth color, this is a good one to use. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do, this is tricky, is on this plane and on this plane, and I'm, not, and I'm actually gonna make another one in here, but on this plane and on the back plane, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna guesstimate to halfway point between the center and the corner here, from the center and the corner, which is right here. I'm gonna do that on all four diagonals. So I'm finding the halfway point and then I'm gonna half it again. Basically what I'm doing is I'm going three quarters of the way up only on the diagonal lines or the ones that go to the corners because this is a diagonal line too. So here's the halfway point there and the halfway point there. Don't, please don't take, please don't take that. I don't need that. And this is a halfway point here and then again here. Now this is not exact science because you're just visually guesstimating. And then after that, what you can do is connect them with straight lines. I call this straight line construction. And what this straight line does, it just helps you. <laughs> gives you a visual structure so when you put the curved line in you're not just guesstimating or roughing it in too loosey-goosey so it's helpful that you do this right and then after that you're gonna do the same thing back here but after you do that you want to get a sharp pencil and I'm just gonna use my red now and I'm just starting to put create an ellipse on a diagonal. Yeah. And it's going through those those corners. And if it helps, rotate the drawing because it helps me. And I'm basically just adding a bit of a curve to each one, one of these. And then afterwards, I might soften it if I see any inconsistencies. Because again, you're... This isn't an exact science, but it gives you a pretty good um, blueprint of how you can lay out the, the uh, ellipse on the diagonal. So there we go. That's that. You're going to apply the same thing here in the back. I'll do that in, in a, well, I'll do that now. Um, so I'll go through this pretty quickly. I go from the center find my center, and then I half that again. So center, half, half. Center, half, half. Actually, it's easier if I do this because I don't have a shadow dealing with me. Center, and then half. All right, now I'm gonna connect those points. And it seems like a lot of steps to do one thing, but it does help because you don't have to go back and do it again or if you ever have to add something or take something away you have all this work that you've done that you can probably reuse for something else I should get an award for making videos with my toddler See right now, I'm just repeating the same process, rotating my drawing. Here it gets a little pointy, so I might have to like pull this out just a smidge more. 
Now, the reason why you don't uh, bring it in from the edge, think of yourself as a sculptor and you're trying to make a sphere out of a, a perfect uh, cube, black of wood or something, right? And you're going to sand it off. Part of that sphere is going to remain intact. Or, I'm sorry, part of the uh, original cube is going to remain intact. And that's where these points are. Um, on the edges. And then the parts where we go in is the part that... Alright. So, okay, yeah. that's that. The next thing you can do is you basically connect the most outer point to the other outer point, And it's almost basically connecting this blue point to that blue point. But once I connect these two points there and the most outer points here, I have myself a sphere going in on an angle. And it looks much different than the sphere here, okay? Now, I want the sphere to uh, wedge into this rectangle. And the trick is you need to find where this ellipse much that looks just like this exists in the middle and where it's going to overlap this vertical line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw this vertical line in dark red, just so you can, you can see it. This is the vertical line corner of this back cube. Okay. Um, and this is the bottom part of the back cube because things are starting to get confusing because there's a lot of overlapping lines. So that's, that's the back cube there. This is the top corner here. So my objective here is to make a, an ellipse about right here so it can cut over um, until it hits the back corner of that cube. I'm sorry, of, yeah, the back corner of the cuboid, which is around here some, somewhere. So if I can, so if I have an ellipse that's about right here, it looks like it will intersect this vertical line about right there. And that's going to create that effect that I'm trying to, to, to get. Um, so how am I going to do that? What I'm going to do is I'm looking at this curve here. It's going to have the same kind of curve here. So I think about right here, trying to line it up vertical with the bottom of my paper. And I said right here is probably where if I started it there, I would get a nice curve. Actually, no, I think I need to start it here because the curve starts way down here, which is going to be, let me just draw this line into here. That's where the curve's going to begin, about here. And it's going to go on an angle like that. So if I do that, it's going to be a little low. So if I go out a little bit more, I think it's going to be safer right here. What I'm going to do is start my square right there. And I'm going to draw this in blue just so you can see what the heck. Once this line I drew in meets this line right here, I'm going to put a little dot. Then I'm going to draw a line across in this direction. Once it meets this line, I draw it down. And once it meets that back corner line, it's going to come back full circle to its original spot. So basically, I, I'm drawing this same um, rectangle or, um, yeah, I guess it's a rectangle or cube right here. And I need my slider to do that. So I'm going to go with... Using that as my guide, slide it up to that part where I just was, that little dot that I made, connect it, run it across. Okay? See, when I did this, I was way off. I wasn't parallel to it. Now I am. And this is this is where it meets that line. Now I can drop a line straight down. Oh boy. I think this was a bad idea. <laughs> Having a two-year-old <laughs> be part of this. And now I'm going to take this and run it over across. Okay. See where it meets full circle or somewhat circle. It will be a full circle soon, but see where it comes back to wh where, where I started that back corner, that light orange corner. So the reason why I drew this in a different color is now I can start to see. Uh, what I need to do. So I have to cross my corners 
find everything and I will be a-okay. So I'm crossing my corners, crossing my corners. There we go. If you ever seen the show Bluey, apparently my son likes it, so I'm gonna keep it on. This goes through here. And this goes up through here. So a lot of the work, the hard work is done. Uh, right now I'm just gonna do the half-half thing. And it's, you really have to focus on the lines that you put down and not on the other lines. Because otherwise it can, again, it will get confusing. It'll make a mental error, which is highly possible. It happens all the time. As long as you catch it, it's not a big deal. All right, so I have my points. I'm gonna connect my dots. circle or somewhat now I'm gonna get my red color and I'm gonna put this in I wasn't that far off when I rough this in um, so and that's why we did rough it in so I would get it close to where I wanted it and it looks like it intersects exactly where I expected it to which is good Almost there. A lot of the work is done. We are just about finished this. And it's kind of the fun part of the whole process. So now we have one ellipse, two ellipse, three ellipse, and we have the cylinder going all the way back, back in space. I'm just gonna bring this all the way up to the line because my halfway point wasn't really perfectly in line. And what I'm gonna do now is find using my red pencil this one here find where this intersects this line intersects it about right here okay so this is the vertical line from the back corner of this cube or rectangle cuboid and then this is the ellipse i just put in and where it intersects it that's really important to find now i'm going to draw a line right in that direction there so i'm going to use my slider and it comes little hands. And I'm gonna bring it up to that point and run it right across. I'm just gonna take it to the back because I don't know how far I need it. Um, so now I, I drew that red line back in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my dark blue pencil, which was around here somewhere. And I'm going to have to find a new one. There we go. So I have a dark blue pencil here. And I'm going to use this to, because this is the darkest value that I have. And I'm going to use this to outline the, the parts of the wedged shapes or forms that are exposed. For example, this corner from here up, so that little dot is really important. But this corner from here up is exposed. So what I can do is I can just draw a line straight up. And then from there, I can just draw a line on this part of the... Draw this line on part of the ellipse that is being shown. And then it's gonna come over and blend right into the exterior part um, of the ellipse in the back. And then come right back here. Once this is outlined, you'll, you'll see it more clearly. At the moment, it might be difficult to see. 
And then, so I'll come full circle and put the rest of this in, but for now, I'm just gonna put this back line in, which is going to follow along until the edge of the back of the uh, cuboid that it's wedged onto, which is right there. And then the back part of the ellipse of this um, cylinder form is right here. And I'm gonna outline that because this is, again, this is exposed. I'm gonna outline the bottom part Notice I'm not drawing any more of this internal ellipse. The only part that's exposed is right here because that's the part that meets the plane of um, the side plane of this form. That's it. And then once it hits right back into the exterior part of the ellipse, uh, blend right in, in, into that line. And then the rest of it, I'm just gonna draw this entire ellipse in, in the front because that's what it looks like on the side. So I'll start to do that now. And it's nice because I did all that leg work with the other uh, colored pencils, um, trying to work my way to the shape that I'm trying to achieve. Actually, this goes like right here. And colored pencil does start to smear on the side of my hand, so I always like to get a piece of paper and cover it as I'm sliding my hand up and down where I've already drawn. This helps keep things a little clean. You can see the little smudge marks starting to form now. So uh, the nice thing about this is once you use the thicker pencil or the darker pencil, uh, the wedged part is is exposed and the internal part is the orange and the red and that's on the in, in interior parts so the orange here that used to be the um original it's called construction lines the original uh cuboid and it's it's uh, clearly gotten smaller than that because we shaved everything off to make a cylinder um that's still there you don't want to erase that com completely uh you just want to think of line weight so you want to make this darker and and the more you can kind of push this value which it naturally is because it's darker, the more it's going to pull forward. Uh, so that's basically done, ellipse on its side. And you can come back in and add another layer if you want to, but for now, I'm satisfied with it. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, if you wanted to put the, the line from the cube back in, here and here with the blue so you can kind of see where this um, comes back out and how deep it is inside of the form that makes more sense. All right, that's it for now.